Okay. Um, so welcome, everybody. Welcome again. We're just approaching the top of the hour. Really excited to be here with you all today. This was a small invitation. Okay. Um, oops. Um, hold on. So I got to mute everybody. myself welcome over there. <laughs> We're just approaching the top of the hour. Okay. Mute myself because now I'm in stereo on YouTube. Okay. That's funny. That's happens. That happens sometimes. So, um, yes, we, we kind of sent this out to a smaller group of people, um, you know, knowing that the, the topic, what we are talking about here, these this five impossible challenges that really drain and derail clients. It's not really what I'm typically talking about. So I want to kind of welcome you all to the call and just start with that again, because this is a very different type of conversation that I want to have today, because typically um, I'm talking about getting clients unstuck and motivated and moving them towards their goal. And that's all the coaching that I did when I started out, you know, 18 years ago as a coach. And sometimes we have to do healing work. Sometimes there are situations, no matter how much we're, you know, a book writing coach or a marketing coach or a goal setting coach or an empowerment coach, we want to move our clients forward. Sometimes we land in the zone of there's a lot of pain here. And yes, of course, you know, all the different things that I teach, we're getting to the pain underneath. But sometimes with clients, there are situations that feel so complicated and overwhelming. And they're so outside of the thing that we're trying to do with our clients. Um, and they really need healing. They need healing, they need transformation, they need a relief from the pain, the terror, the grief um, to a different place, a place of calm, a place of hope, a place of resiliency, sometimes a place of just getting through the day. So this is a very different conversation, very different topics that I'm talking about today. Um, again, they're not totally focused on motivation and, and um, getting clients to be more successful, but it, it's in the background of that work. So I want to tell you why I'm doing this today. Um, I'm going to screen share a fun little picture here so that y'all can see it. So here's our topic for today. Um, <laughs> this, I put it on the floor to take a picture of it um, because this was my, my giant binder of when I was doing tons and tons of client sessions years ago when I had 20 clients a week and I was working with people on success focused things and um, these are the things that started to collect, right? All my approaches, all my techniques. You could say that Tapping Into Wealth, my first book with Penguin came out of here. You could say that Unblocked, right? My book with the all the work through the chakras came out of here. And certainly these five unique challenges 100% came out of here, right? And so um, the reason I'm, I'm showing that is because um, a, just about a year ago, I opened up to taking some private clients that I hadn't done in many, many years. And I went back to that notebook because my, my small amount of private clients, although they had hired me to reach certain goals, some of these same painful, uh, derailing, draining, impossible background challenges in their life is the very first things that we were working on. So I feel like I dusted off a lot of those old notes because I was now going off-roading from the goal they had hired me for to doing something that was handling a healing, something that was terrifying, something that was scary, something that was draining and derailing. So I wanna talk about those five big ones today and walk you through what I saw for many, many years as a private coach, and then reminded myself again a year ago on what are these five big ones that I end up using over and over and over because people need it. 
Um, so that's our topic of today. That's why I'm doing this. That's where it comes from. It's not in the typical lane of way that I'm talking about. This really is kind of a specialized case, but it does relate to motivation. It does relate to success because these were the things going on. I'm going to say in the background of my clients lives. And so sometimes they would bring them up and sometimes they, you know, I could just feel something looming in the background. It's like, I haven't written my book at all this week. I haven't gotten done what I wanted to do. I'm kind of exhausted. And when they would bring up one of these five challenges, you know, wow, it, it, it could totally derail the session because it was so much detail, so much information, so many specifics, so complicated. And when I tell you though what they are, the five things, you'll understand why. And I immediately froze because it was overwhelming, not what I knew how to help. My mind would be reeling saying, I, I mean, this is... I don't even know how I could help with this, right? It's too overwhelming, too complicated, too far reaching. And so I would freeze because I didn't know what to do. I'd feel compassion, but I definitely felt inept. And it was hard to kind of get the session back on track or just be with the fact that the session was going to be completely derailed. So over those years, I started to play with um, one, uh, like, like one after another of how can I create a session? How can I, how can I overcome my own feeling like this is too big? Like there is no solution to this problem and actually start to address some of these issues and bring that healing, bring that transformation, bring that hopefulness, or at least a moment of calm where a client can like take a breath. Um, and so trial and error, I started to create these five very specific ways of working with these five challenges. Um, and they really, really worked. So I wanna walk through what these five challenges are so that you can have a sense of, um, of, of what I'm talking about here. And I, and I want you to think about it because every time I, I, I started talking about this last summer, last August, I kind of did a pilot on this. And as I talked about these five challenges, um, you know, people in the community were raising their hand, like I'm starting to cry right, right now, because that is the issue that I'm struggling with. And I don't talk about it because it's hard. Okay. So um, I'm going to start with the, I have them in order, but I'm actually going to start with the last one. Um, because I remember when I'm just telling the story about having stuff that a client is trying to work on and having this derailed and derailed and derailed. I had a client that was a, was a, um, a realtor and really wanted to grow her business. And realtors are great clients for coaches because they know that when their vibe gets tight and they get anxious and worried, like it's like everything dries up. And they know that when they're feeling good and they're positive and they're expanding and they're networking, they make more money. Um, but every time this client came, um, or, or at least every other session, there would be this exhausting, complicated, frustrating, shocking story of another thing that her sister did. And her sister was angry and difficult and hard to deal with. And you couldn't confront her because you could never win. It was hard to set boundaries because then she would guilt you. And the this difficult relationship that was in her life would just take so much energy because before she saw her sister, it was like anxious and worried and stressed and how is this going to go and how can I appease her? And then after one of these situations, it was um, how, uh, like, who does that? How, well, how could she say that? How could she do that? I've done so much and I can't believe she treats it. And it just took so much headspace. And, um, yeah, I related because I had to deal with my 
ex every week back then. I had a, my, was a single mom with a daughter. So I had to deal with someone on a weekly basis. That was difficult. That was often angry. That could be, you know, manipulative. That would try to intimidate. And then I would, uh, you know, spend time worrying about that interaction, trying to guard myself for that interaction, trying to gear myself up for that interaction. And then on the other side, just talking about it to my family, like, oh my God, you're not going to believe what I did this time. And I really sat with how much energy that takes and how many details and how exhausting and how many stories and so you'd see how that could override a session. And so I started to think about how common that was for me in, in thinking about how can I develop a way to work with a client on a difficult person that is draining their energy and bring them to a place where they don't feel as triggered and bring them to a place where they actually feel different around them. Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> Kelly said, sounds like my life with my sister, right? Um, and so how do I help somebody with that in the moment when they're always in that battle? So the first one I call like, I dread dealing with this angry person, but what can I do about it? Because the first thing your client is gonna say is they're not gonna change right? They're not going to go to therapy. They're not going to willingly, uh, you know, be less offensive in some way. And so whether it's a, an angry boss, a difficult family member, an ex-partner, um, that constant source of stress and upset. And one of the key things I want you to write down about this is the constant, not like the upset, but also the shock in how much mental energy we expend on being shocked by what they did this time, right? That can keep us spinning and talking about it and talking about it. Um, in, in how in between the ruptures, there is this loss of energy because we can't get any closure and we really don't feel empowered. And so here I have this, this client that was a realtor and she's trying to take this big step up, right? And be like a leader in her office and, and actually have somebody work for her. And not only was this situation over here, like draining her and derailing her and exhausting her, but it also became her secret piece of evidence of why she couldn't handle like taking a leadership role because I can't even manage this difficult person. And what if I take this leadership role and I have to deal with more people like that? If I have more clients, what if some of them are like that? And I don't trust myself that I know how to deal well with difficult people. And so it's, um, it, there, there's the aspects in there that are so important, right? The, the, the exhaustion, the, the constant triggering, the, how we can ruminate it after, but then that being shocked again by the behavior. And then this piece of, I like, I can be thrown into situations where I don't know what to do. I can't deal with it. So I cannot take the steps that I'm trying to take whether it's I'm going to put myself out there more because I might encounter people like that. If I go into a business, I might encounter people like that and have to really stand my ground. And I have a whole lifetime or, or years of proof that I can't do that. Um, and so what I found is that I could use tapping in a very laser focused way to turn down, it's kind of like, um, you know, tapping in the old days was like, oh my God, it works on phobias, right? So somebody is like looking at a snake and they're like, ah, right, totally fight or flight. And then they would just do a bunch of tapping and be like, hmm, snake doesn't seem as, you know, now I'm looking at it and I'm seeing it totally differently because of my whole body is calm. And so what I realized is I could build on that because the person is the snake. <laughs> let's just say that lovingly. And you could take someone 
like a person, their facial expressions, their voice, their energy, the way they move, that thing that they do, the way they look at me. And you could take that trigger with tapping, like reach inside their body and turn down the reaction to that person. So your client is not like, yeah, we can't change them. And that we can't change the other person used to hold me back from trying to deal with this. But when we change our client, it's like the other person changes. It's weird. And of course, our client feels so much more solid. They are so much more boundary. They feel more unflappable. They feel more empowered. Um, And it's for them, it changes everything. Now, if the person's in their life, they might have to do it over and over, right? Uh, It's like, and that's part of the discussion, because sometimes it's like, um, you need to stop hanging around with that person. But other times we don't have a choice. But the upsets are now taking way less energy and your client is not walking away with all of this. Oh my God, I'm shocked. I'm blah, blah, blah. They're just like, that's how it is. And I do the best I can. And so there's this different, like shorter cycle of having to deal with the different, the difficult person. Um, And that bonus piece, right? That bonus piece of a client, which I didn't really expect, which is them saying, I can deal with hard people. I'm watching myself handle somebody who's a pain in the ass and difficult and confrontational and all of that. And I'm now seeing that I can, you know, rise above, be this bigger person, be unflappable, be in a, in a more leadership energy around a very difficult person. And so that's a kind of confidence that we get. Now, um, the second one I'm going to tell you about, and these are kind of out of order than what I have. But it builds on the same idea, but it's even more painful. And so the second big one that I found comes up over and over and over, even before we had an epidemic of parents with adult addicted children. Um, Even before then, I found this one came up over and over. And it's when there is a child in your client's life that is um, in some type of distress or danger or ill, right? Or has a, a, an issue, a syndrome or on drugs, which uh, there's an epidemic of women in my age group who have this, right? And they're 20 something children. So this is another one where it's not gonna, you know, it often didn't come up in the session. Um, I remember a client who was working on getting, you know, she really wanted to get a promotion. Um, But what kept coming up was this uh, amount of terror and grief and fear because her son had autism um, and was around seven or eight. And she was racked by not only the the worry about the day-to-day life and how hard that was, but also thinking about his whole future and how is he going to do in this next phase? And is he going to get into a school? There was so much worry, right? I also had clients that had children that were, that were ill, that were sick. Um, And so again, you have a, a something here where, there is so much detail, so much information, so many particulars, right? And you have the relationship of a mother or a father with a child that is so fraught with terror and guilt and fear and worry and helplessness in these situations. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a, a watching a child that we love and feeling helpless, watching them suffer, worrying about them suffering in the future, not knowing what's going to happen. Um, to me, that is, you know, as a coach, it's like my heart would break, but I felt completely powerless, right? Like I can't help with, I can help with this, but to see clients in such distress around it, I really, I tapped for myself. I took a breath. And I realized that there's a lot that I could do. And so I used a similar process in a way of taking their own child, 
in turning down all the, the triggers of the terror, the fear, and then the guilt, right? And the powerlessness, everything that got triggered by looking at their own child. And as I learned that process and watched people go through it, I realized how much is sitting in the energy field between that parent who's terrified and sad and angry and powerless and guilty and worried and their child who can, by the way, feel all of that. And so as I started to see some of that move, yes, a lot of people noticed changes with their child. They, they showed up differently, but I realized um, this isn't an angry jerk. This is someone we love. So we can actually do even more. So I started to bring in, what can you do? Well, you can't fix everything, but you could have that client who absolutely loves their child feel calm enough, even for a few moments, that they can once again picture their child and without guilt and fear and terror and worry, surround them with beautiful healing light. Surround them with these beautiful words like, I give you permission to be fully you in your life, in your, in your purpose, to be fully alive, fully you, fully everything that you are. Um, words that came to me in sessions that people absolutely loved. And so now... How have we changed the field between the most tight bond, a parent and a child? We've, we've taken all of this terror and fear and guilt and anger and why me and guilt about that. And we've moved it. We've done real healing there. And instead of just leaving someone in a calm state, we have now brought in something that feels beautiful and hopeful and positive. And I... I really think the child feels it. We've had lots of stories where people are like, I haven't heard from my adult son in three years. And we did that session last time and the phone rang. Like it's weird, the changes that happen. I even had a client with a difficult teenager call me up and say, we did that session. And I got up this morning and she cleaned her entire room. Like, how does that happen? Right? So, um, so that one to me, again, uh, I've had so many coaches over the years since I've been running these programs and group programs, when people will say to me, you know, um, at retreats and stuff where I'm talking more casually with people at, at dinner table, you know, they're in the program, they're working hard and they have this, how do I, Hey, Margaret, how do I tap? And then on, and then there's this whole story about their child. They're terrified. And I've walked through, like, this is what I, I had this happen, come up a lot. I've walked through the process and they've often burst into tears, just as I'm saying, um, exactly the kind of tapping they have to do in this process. Um, and I, I, I was like, you know, I really need to someday, it's not in the main stream of what I do, but someday I need to write this down and teach people how to do it, um, which is what I have done, <laughs> which is what I have done. Um, so let's talk about the next one. So that's two. Um, the third one is relates to your client themselves, which is, um, what if I get worse instead of better? What if I get worse instead of better? I had this diagnosis. I just got a diagnosis or I'm having surgery. What if I get worse instead of better? And so in me, I mentioned that like a year ago, I, I just opened up to taking just a couple of private clients. All three of these sessions I've mentioned so far were immediately used with those clients. And, you know, they know me from Unblocked, right? They know me from all of the work I've done in Tapping Into Well. And they came into private coaching with me. And these were the sessions that I have used with almost all of my private clients, these three already. And so what if I get worse instead of better? 
like the scariest thing that we never want to say. Once again, when it comes into a session, because someone, um, yeah, because someone is like, you know, I'm trying to write my book and I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that. And then it comes into the session. Once again, we have a massive amount of detail, of information, of story, of complication, right? Because it's like all complicated details. It's like, then this happened, then that happened, then I saw this specialist, and then I have this issue. And then, you know, I'm having this surgery, but supposedly, and it's a lot. And I remember thinking like, I'm not an expert in like physical healing. Um, Well, I quickly learned to become one. This was one of the first sessions I developed because um, I had a friend that was a chiropractor who started to refer me a whole bunch of people for like, you know, three or four sessions, you know, maybe a session, a package session of five. And it was all physical things. It was all physical terror that they were in because they had a diagnosis or they had to have surgery or some issue. And so of course there's the physical issue itself. There's an impact of that. Then there's the um, physical, the, the, the actual treatment. And sometimes there's a massive impact on our system of that. But then there's also the worry, the shock. Like, I can't believe this happened. This has rocked my feeling of safety in the world. The shock, the fear that of course naturally fills us. And that can linger for years in our nervous system, right? It could be treated. You could be cancer free, but the worry is still there. Um, And so when we think about worry and stress, right? The worst possible thing that we could have going on in our bodies. And it's literally focused on our bodies. Um, And so that the physical issue in working around that, it's really one of the first sort of unique, very detailed, specialized things that I developed. And I, you know, now I'm kind of using the body and the symptoms and the doctor's words and whatever has become this trigger to turn down the fight or flight, the, the, the cortisol, the adrenaline, the stress with what if the worst thing happens? And it's hard, just like it's hard with when, when you have a parent saying, what if my child dies on the street? And that is their terror. And you are having them tap with that. Like, we're going to use that phrase. Um, what if I die? Right? What if I don't make it through this surgery? But this is why it is so powerful and important. It takes courage, but this is healing work, right? This is going there. It is, yep, it's not aligned directly with the goal. It's not part of success empowerment coaching, but it is incredibly needed healing. And so bringing that stress down in a way that is, takes courage, honestly, right? I mean, I worked with people with cancer and I was like terrified. Like, I don't want to have them tap and say, what if I die and leave my children? But that was the pervasive terror going on all the time. And I thought to myself, what could possibly change by me doing it? Like, I can't help with this. And it did help. It allowed them to be calm. It allowed them their nervous system to come down, which changes the healing in their body. And then once again, I realized we could also do more. I had studied hypnosis, hypnotherapy. So I bought a whole bunch of books on like, you know, imagery and their studies around healing enhancement by visualizing healing happen. So I brought in, I just kept playing with things because, you know, clients don't really know. Um, that you don't, you're figuring it out on the fly, right? Because they don't know the techniques you're using. And so I created these processes, these ways of working that included all this hypnotic positive imagery at the end and their subconscious mind creating the healing images. um, So that, you know, on the one hand, according to like studies done at Harvard, right? That kind of imagery can enhance healing. Um, But secondly, they felt empowered. They felt a little more in control. They felt less helpless. 
yeah, they felt like I said the scary thing. Yeah, I'll face their fears. I, I said the scary thing. And now I feel lighter. I have this, like, suddenly there is access. And that kind of defied my possibility of belief, right? Because I thought, like, you can't turn this kind of fear down. But you actually can. And they could have moments where they would feel more balanced, more perspective, more hopeful, um, and have something to do that felt positive. I also found that they were more likely in that state to take action that supported their own healing. So that was another like surprising thing. It's like they would come back and go, oh yeah, well, I did, you know, I just decided to like, you know, uh, uh, do this research and then I found this doctor and then I went to see him and then, and actually I'm, and it's like all of a sudden resources appear, right? Or I, I started listening to this lecture and I realized if I change how I'm eating and, and I'm gonna start drinking more of that tea that they mentioned, all of a sudden there is like a resourcefulness in the hopefulness, which is really powerful, right? And I was always stunned by that. Um, and I was also stunned by sometimes seeing miraculous, miraculous results before my eyes. I had a, a one of the referrals from a chiropractor was another chiropractor um, who was very, you know, anti-establishing medicine, medicine, but had developed rheumatoid arthritis which put her in terror because now she was going to have to go down the pharmaceutical route, which to her was like, I might as well just, you know, leap into a volcano in my belief system. Even having to meet with regular conventional med medical doctors had her like enraged and triggered. And so we did this process and inside the session, it just in a 45 minute, her range of motion in her knees was better. Like the inflammation came down. It was stunning. Now I had seen this demonstrated on like the DVDs you used to buy to learn how to do tapping, but it's amazing to see it for your, for your own eyes. Um, the other example I talk about, and I know it, you'll hear it again, is um, a woman that had a large cyst on her face. I mean, it was about this big and it stuck out about this far. Um, and she kept saying, I'm working with a, you know, a naturopath and they're away for a month, but when they come back, they're going to give me something that will break down the hard shell. And she'd been in battle with her doctor because they wanted to cut it off. And the, you know, the holistic people were saying, do not cut that off your face. Um, and so I said, well, let's try this. And she said, well, it can't work because my naturopath is going to send me the stuff to break down this hard shell and then it'll reabsorb. And I said, ah, what's the harm? And so we did this whole healing process. And then we added in this positive visualization. Um, like, well, what would it look like if it dissolved? Like, how could your body help this hard shell that she had pictured in her mind dissolve? Two weeks later, she came back for a session. I opened the door and there she stood. She was in her eighties, by the way, there she stood with this tiny, tiny bump on her face. And she said, I, I don't even, you know, I don't even need the session. I just, I wanted you to see it. Like it was crazy. And we just cried and we hugged and I'm like, what am I doing? Like I, you know, I was still like half in corporate America at the time. And I was like, what is happening right now? I don't even like, no one's even going to believe me in my family. Um, so amazing things are happening are possible with healing and all of the fear in this one. It's not an angry jerk. It's not a beloved child. It's on myself and the doctors and all the battles I can be in with, with, the, with the doctors, all the terror that I can have in my body. Um, and so talk about healing, right? And it's not something I talk about all the time because I teach people to become empowerment coaches, motivating coaches. Yeah, incredibly gratifying, incredibly gratifying. So that's the third one. Um, and then the, the next one that I want to talk about is similar, and it sounds a little innocuous, but I can't tell you how much I use it. And it's about cravings. And so it's the, 
I was doing so well. And then I blew it of, which is what we say about cravings. And this was not just for clients who were, um, you know, trying to be healthier or trying to lose weight. Although of course it was, that's a big piece of it. But cravings can run the whole gamut of, as we know, to substances, to behaviors, to um, ways that we procrastinate. And they all have something in common, which is they are stronger than what we want to be doing. They're stronger than our goal. They're stronger than who we are. Um, we white knuckle it against the craving. And then eventually it takes over and we lose our self-control or the craving wins. And it's not just the craving, it's how people feel about themselves, that they gave in, that they don't have discipline, that they don't have, that they're not strong enough, right? It's the, this is what I do. And so it becomes a sabotage. Um, craving can be, can be, um, uh, you know, uh, pleasure shopping, right? Spending money. I've had people who were gambling and like gave into that craving, even in a, even in, you know, uh, ladies, you know, in their sixties with extra time on their hands, um, when they opened up casinos or I live in Massachusetts and they opened up a big casino in Connecticut and all of a sudden it caused problems. Right. And so I had this goal and then I lost it. Right. I went too far. And so they're always amped up by the stress response and they can always be turned off easily. So it's, uh, you know, I include it as one of these special sessions. If, if I hear a client saying, you know, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do this. And like I heard this a couple of weeks ago from someone and, you know, I just, my eating was off and I know I feel shitty when I do it. And I ate all this sugar. And then the next day I had no motivation. And it's like, I'm now down in this pit, right? I feel awful. It's not good for me. And I feel like, ugh, I have no willpower. What is wrong with me? And so this is one that I will grab and say, uh, do you know how easy it is to turn off cravings? And then when you do the session, it's so much bigger than cravings, because again, it's about I'm not in control. So, you know, I'm an empowerment coach. I teach people empowerment coaching, success coaching, but now I've taken this one session, it plopped in, and I've brought someone at the end to feeling more empowered right? It's a very physical issue. It's very narrow. Like these are like a hodgepodge, right? But at the end of the session, there is a feeling of being empowered or hopeful or in control, at least calmer, right? Like something else is possible. Um, the shame, the frustration, the being weak, the being angry at ourselves that come with cravings is painful. And I know you all know what I'm right. We have lived this, all of us at some time. Um, so that's a really special one at well, and as well, and it's just so easy. And what's fun about that one is it's so measurable. If you're trying to show people that tapping works, um, or you're invited to do a demonstration, um, you know, and you, you're just going to practice like demonstrating tapping for a group, or you're just being very lovely because it's your, you know, some group that you're in and you're like, sure, I'll give you a little mini demonstration. Everybody bring their favorite food they crave. Boom. Really powerful demonstration. Um, so let's talk about, so that's number four, right? It's the, I was doing so well and then I blew it. And which is all about my cravings got the best of me. The last one is perfectionism. And I call it the paralyzing prison. It's a special type of procrastinating. Um, it's a way of procrastinating that sometimes our clients don't, they're very secretive about it. Right. They don't say I want it to be perfect, um, but they'll say, I just don't think I'm ready yet. They'll say lots of things and you'll start to figure out that 
what's going on underneath this procrastination or they're asking for more ideas or more strategies or more checking or more practice is this, um, but it could have been better. And so it will stop them before they do something, a special way of procrastination. But one of the biggest ways that it depresses our motivation is when we have done something and then we say, but it, I know it could have been better or it should have been better or I should have known that already, right? Or, you know, I, I, yes, I did it, but I, I, I wanted to get it done months ago. So I'm, it's still not good enough for me. And so it's a very secretive and a very hardened and a very, I'm right about that part of the mind. And so over the years, um, I, I really had to develop more tricky sort of, I had to be more maniacal than their inner perfectionistic critic to work with it. Um, because it's like an inner truth that you're up against in your client. Because you could say you did a great job and in their mind, they're saying, no, I didn't, I know better. And so I find that kind of perfectionism, although it's devastating to live inside of that cycle, it is devastating. Um, it's also hard to work within somebody. And I've heard coaches say, like, I've gone years and they, they're, that part of their mind is still like, mm, but I'm still right about that. It should have been better. It could have been better. I'm not ready yet. Um, and so to get under that prison of always proving, always striving, never really arriving yet, I'm just never quite good enough. I never deserve, um, really needs a specific tricky way of getting under it to break that cycle because where you're trying to bring them to is a very, very non-mental way of being. It's a way of bringing them into more joy, like more positive dopamine and serotonin, like a way of that they actually say to themselves, um, I just, that was awesome, right? Or good job to myself. And they are so opposed to it. And it's all very mental. It's like a mental prison where you can never win and you can never get out. So I, I had, um, I, I know I've shared this before um, with some of you have heard me talk about this. Um, this past year, a good friend of the family was really struggling with something and it was a traumatic event that happened. Um, and so, um, my husband was like, you should do a session with Meg. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> it's a right back there on my little couch. I had someone come to the house, a, you know, a family friend, more, more of a, my, my husband's friend, um, and worked on this traumatic event. And it was so, you know, powerful for them. Um, when he was leaving, he was like, okay, I'll see you next week. Same time. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So when he came back for the next session, what more came up after working on this, this really specific trauma was the part that was stuck was he made a mistake. The whole thing was happen, happened because he made a mistake. And that is unforgivable because he's supposed to be perfect all the time. He can never make a mistake. And so what I asked was, um, okay, so when you think about all your years of training, your doctorate, your, your years of expertise, your years of experience in the field, in your career, and if you make one mistake, he said, I'm a piece of shit, not good enough. And I was like, wow, all that gets washed away in one mistake not good enough, don't deserve. And so, although we worked on the trauma, the book, the, the next session was, I don't deserve to let this anxiety, this terror, this I've never, I haven't laughed in a year or enjoyed myself. I don't deserve because I made that mistake. So um, this is the session that ended up 
doing was more about this perfectionism. And it was like, we're just going to go right there because I can't have him showing up every week for that session. Uh, I was like, of course I'll help you. Then I was like, wait, how, how many, how much more am I going to be helping you? Um, but that was what was needed. Right. And that was a stunning uh, eye opening shift for him. He's like, I, I, I don't even know what life would be like, uh, you know, now at the end of this session because of that shift. Um, so that's something I'm also really passionate about. And it's one of those things that um, when it's there, it's better to go straight on it, right? You better to go straight on it. Yeah. So Ernest said, what exactly did you do with him? I am going to show you because um, and some of you know that I've created a, um, a five session program called Advanced Coach Skills. And I, you know, I don't look to create new brand new things, but last summer, um, I, because I was doing these, these client sessions, uh, with private clients again, and using all these sessions again, we decided, my whole team decided to put these together into a more advanced mini program. Um, I sell other programs that, um, you know, that are, that are sometimes beginner and sometimes it's a year worth of work. This is very different because of the unique nature of each of this. They're not related to each other, right? The unique nature of these sessions. Um, and we have a really special um, opportunity that I want to share with you that we have um, on this advanced coach skill program. Um, so the program is called Advanced Coach Super Skills. And what I did, what I created was these five sessions fully scripted. Each one is about 20 pages in the manual and a full demonstration with a group that was live at the time, right? So real people in a group with a full walkthrough demonstration of each of these sessions, which isn't also something I typically do because I usually teach and then I give you all the scripting and then you go off and practice it and do it. And in this case, I did a full demonstration. So I taught, I went through all the keys and walked through the whole session, why we're doing certain things, what the most important elements are, because each of these sessions is not like the other. They're completely unique. And then I did the full demonstration for everybody in, in that group. So advanced coach skills starts with a manual. I have started printing mine. This is about 170 pages. And I'll tell you why it's that long um, for these five sessions. The way that we did the manual is each one, each of the five sessions has the full teaching. Everything I taught, the outline, the key points pulled out, what can happen if it can go this way or this way, what to do. And of course the scripted session and then all the tapping that I use or the hypnotic visualizations that I use all scripted. And then because a coach was putting together this manual um, named Irene, she said, I also like to have a version of each session with all the extraneous stuff script stripped out in just the session script. So that now I've learned it, I'm using it with a client, I can go to the appendix and have the same session script, just pure for me to go through with the client without all these extra notes in there. Um, so that's why the learning guide is so long. And then each of the sessions are a full video lesson. So this is where you see me teach the session Session one is the paralyzing prison of perfectionism. It, it, it could have or should have been better in learning how to free clients from that perfectionism so that they get to the other side of feeling more joyful, feeling more powerful, feeling like, okay, I'm actually enough and I can move forward in an empowered way. So, you know, I still love that I get to empowerment in every one of these sessions, but each one of them is, again, like one of these things is they're not like the other, but they each follow the same flow, right? The session approach, the script review, then a full demonstration, and then people asking me questions, 
video lesson two is the what if the worst thing happens to my child and transforming that worry, that guilt, that panic, moving that into this healing energy, this peaceful healing field in between the client and their child. Again, the full session teaching and a demonstration with the group. Um, this session also includes if it's a child, like a beloved child that's suffering versus a drug addicted adult child, which is a little bit different, right? So we have information for both how those sessions might be slightly similar, but different from each other. The third video lesson goes through the cravings. I was doing so well and I blew it. So that is the turning off cravings that sabotage each of these session teachings with the full session, about 20 pages. It's a lot. And the th it's very small writing. And so each one of them are very, um, we format them in a way that it's easy for you to, to use and learn. Um, but it's a lot in there, right? So you'll have the manual while you're going through the video training. Video lesson four is the what if I get worse instead of better. And that again is a little bit like a double whammy because not only is the uh, physical issue and the healing enhancement visualization in there, I also add if someone is saying to me, I'm having surgery next week, I'm going to say, we're not doing anything in this session today, except prepping you for that surgery so that they go into that surgery in this um, hypnotically enhanced way, right? So they go into their surgery with literally their body informed on what is going to happen and their body informed, this is okay, this is good for me. I can heal quickly. I can accept what's coming into me. And, and we even bring all of this beautiful light and healing to the image of the doctors, the surgeons, the whole room. It just changes their whole system as they come into surgery. So that one is actually like a double session. And then number five is the, I dread dealing with them, thus taking the sting out of difficult, angry people, shifting a client from being tormented, the tormented target, which is the words I use, because that's how I felt, the tormented target of an angry, abusive, or abrasive person into feeling more unflappable in their leadership energy. So those are the five sessions that address these five difficult, challenging, like seemingly overwhelming, impossible things that are just so common. You know, some of you have mentioned, and thank you, um, that things you're struggling with right now. Um, so the program is um, the five video lessons, the manual, um, and it's a, a 1997 value. That's the value we put on it. I also do two live Q and A calls with this offer. Um, and those are coming up right around the corner, March 8th and March 20th. And those are for you to dive in, start watching the training, you know, tap along with the full demonstration. So you'll see the demonstration, but you can also experience the demonstration just like you were there. Um, and have your questions for me for these two live mentorship calls. I love doing live mentorship with people because I know my best students. I know some of you are here from other programs. They like that mentorship coaching. Um, and then I've added some of my best bonuses from um, from years of making like training videos, right? Where I was like, what's the biggest thing that coaches ask that therapists ask me, but what do I do when clients don't feel anything that is a video training with step-by-step -step approach? It's a $97, um, value, but it's really like a must have mini training. It's, it's, you know, maybe a 40 minute training video, um, it has my detailed teaching that you can use immediately if you have someone who's like, I don't feel anything, or you're worried what would happen if a client says, I don't feel anything. Um, it happens every once in a while. The second bonus, this is something that I created and use all the time. Um, and my coaches love it over the years, even like our faculty coaches have used it. And it's basically 
a pre um, tapping session for like a before a session for you to tap on yourself, right? So obviously I have way too many words on some of these, <laughs> some of these slides. Um, but when we're a new coach, it can feel scary to do a session with someone or a really important client. So when I had like the head of radiology at Mass General or an attorney or the head of some company, I would get really nervous and intimidated and I could feel like I want to impress them. I'm insecure, but I want them to see me as good and I'm feeling and I'd be nervous. A, a way to tap very specifically walking you through it to get you ready um, to be your best in a session. It's just one of those things that coaches um, that it comes in handy. Let's put it that way. Um, the third one is since my first baseline training after leaving engineering, the first thing I did was become a hypnotherapist because that makes sense. Um, what I put in this training video were the top five hypnotic techniques that you should be using in your sessions all the time. You don't need to be a hypnotist. You don't need to be trained. You can just easily use these simple hypnotic techniques in your sessions. Um, you don't have to say, I'm going to hypnotize you. They're just little ways, little tricks, little techniques that you can build into your session. You'll be amazed at how simple they are and how well they work. So these are the bonuses that we've added in um, for the, the program. Again, another 97 value. And for the ladies, ladies only, you also do get a ticket to our live event in April. It's called Motivation Breakthrough Live. And so this is a women only event. It's the brain body reset for motivation, energy, and confidence to build your coaching business. Um, that ticket for that sells for $97. You get a ticket paid for to that event for the ladies. Um, and yes, it is women only. We talk about menopause and hormones, guys. You don't want to be there <laughs> because that affects our motivation. So that is what our last bonus. So the total value comes over 2,400. I didn't really even add it up. I know it's more than $2,000. Um, and the price on this program on advanced coach skills is $14.97. And I think it's for how special it is and unique it is. I know that's an amazing price. And we're doing something really special for you. You know who I am because it always comes up when I make an offer that right now we have a limited time bonus and we are going to put the link on the chat for you. You cannot like you have to use this link to order, um, it will take $750 off that price. So if you've never bought anything with me before, if you've never bought my other program, Motivation Super Skills is what a lot of people know, um, we are giving you a bonus of $750 for a limited time. If you click the link we put in the chat, you will see that that, that coupon is coming off. Um, you have to use the link we're giving you because that has the coupon built in. The coupon is there and it will run out of time. I don't know how many days you have, but I know that will disappear. So your price is $747, just under $750 for the motivation coach. I mean, for the advanced coach skills program, this very, very specialized piece of work Um they really mean the world to me and have meant the world to many of my clients over the years. And I wanted to get it all down so that anyone can use these sessions and get the same results. That is my goal. Now, some of you have um, motivation super skills. You have my other program, motivation super skills. I want you to know you have a different coupon. So you are gonna check your email if you already own and invested in Motivation Super Skills program, you have a different coupon because you've invested. And so you have to check your email. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you have a different coupon in your email today. Check your spam folder if you want to find it um, to take the step into advanced coach skills. Okay. So that is our... Um, the, the, the brand new program, again, 
This is the first time I'm offering it as this done program. You guys are the first to really hear this offer. I piloted and created it just last summer. And here it is the first time that we are making it really available to more people. These are the two live Q&A calls. If you're curious and you want to make sure you write those down uh, March 8th and March 20th to get ready, uh, dive into the training, get ready. And again, the dates on our live events, we have our bonuses. Those are all ready to go. Those are all videos, those bonuses. And our women only live event motivation breakthrough live is April 24, 25 and 26 to have all of those dates down. Okay. Um, yes. Um, any questions on that? And again, if you've already purchased motivation, super skills, you know who you are, you have a different coupon. It is in your email. You have a different link. And when you click your special secret link, you will see a different coupon is already applied for you. Okay. Um, awesome. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great to see you guys. Um, so yes, if you have the other program, check your email um, and you will see that. And we're not giving that link here because most of you have never, you know, don't have that program. So there's a special group of you. Um, I'm so glad. All right, Anna, she said, I found the email. <laughs> so Anna knows. Um, awesome. And for everyone else, the link we're giving you is a pretty damn good coupon in itself, $750 off. Um, so really half off to get this really special program. Um, and so, you know, and if it's not for you, no worries. I appreciate you being here. I want you to think about these five challenges, be aware of them, know them, um, have the courage to know that you can really help people. You can really make a difference. Even when they have one of these challenges, they're dealing with an angry jerk. They, they're, they're, they're worrying if they're going to get worse instead of better. They're worrying about a child that they love. Like what if the worst thing happens or they're dealing with cravings or they're stuck in that prison of perfectionism that there is a way to help people. Yeah, there really is. And it's, it's, it's healing. It's healing. It's empowerment. It's important. It's panic, pain, anxiety, stress. It is hormones. It is empowerment work. We're bringing hope and empowerment back to people through these sessions. Um, and that is something that we need to be able to do as well. Yeah. So you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Um, if you don't, if you're looking for an email and you don't see it, you can email support at margaretlynchrenary.com. Check your spam folders and Beverly will help you right out. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you for all the love you've been giving me here. Um, all the nodding along and all the great comments. Um, I so appreciate it. Um, Kathleen, you had your hand up. Did you have a question? Do you want to put it on the chat or do you want to unmute? Or did you get your question answered already? Oh, hello. No, you're good. You have a question. Okay. Can you unmute? There it goes. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. Um, I want to say for some reason I'm having an issue with the, um, with the, uh, Mm, chat. I was wondering, is there a way you can send me the information on the first coupon in my, to my email? You will get that as well. Yeah. So, so everybody, great question. Everybody's going to get emails. You know that when I'm making an offer, I'm not just going to say it once. If you've been around, right, we're going to send it to you in email. <laughs> David is laughing. <laughs> he knows, right? We aren't going to just tell you once because people don't read much email anymore. So you have to send them like 10. So yes, for sure, Kathleen, if you are okay. here. Yeah. Because I'm stuck looking at what was said at the beginning of the 